All right, everybody, this is a bonus episode that we just decided to keep talking about fishing and hunting in our lives and stuff if you want to listen to. Um, it's pretty good. There's some good stuff in here, some deep dive insights on our relationships and all the stuff that led to where we are. And we'll keep doing this because we like talking. And we're going to talk no matter what, whether the mics are on or not. So enjoy. We're like jumping back in here because we were just standing around bullshitting because our wives are down in my house drinking their White Claws and the kids seem to be behaving because I haven't gotten a text message from anybody yet. So no. I'm going to let them keep going. So Yeah, full disclosure, my wife's at home sleeping. We will keep rolling this yeah. thing. So Robert was talking about um, how... A few, a few different things I started talking about. So... Um, as I mentioned in uh, the last podcast, um, you're going to have to cut this out of here. <laughs> I lost my train of thought for a second. Sorry. Um, <laughs> okay, cut. so as, as, no, you're good. So as I was talking in the last podcast uh, that I listened to you guys, and even though I, I've been there for everything you talked about, um, I couldn't turn it off. It was I was eager to listen. Um, the content was good. It was interesting. Um, but one thing, a couple things that I brought up, um, was one, uh, that you guys know me better than I realized. And, uh, it was cool. It was really cool about being reluctant to walleye fish. It's just not something <laughs> I enjoy. I really enjoy crappie fishing. That's because we catch crappie. Uh, even then, man, I can go, I can go walleye fishing with my buddy Mike at the camper every single weekend. And it just, it don't do it for me. That's because they're trolling, and it's a job when you do that. I get what you're saying, though. I get what you're yes, saying. I do. Fishing, <clears throat> fishing to me is it's kind of like that. I'll go do it every single time. I don't get super excited for it. But it's something to do with the guys. It's something to do for catching hell. It's something to do together. Um, and, you know, the conversations we have out there, the the time we have together that's to me that's more exciting than fishing in, in itself but I, I'm, I'm still gonna go i'm still i'm still gonna do it so i get what you're saying so that that there was a lot of things uh for me i mean we've, we've been we've been i'd say pretty close friends since last spring maybe with football but i think the hunting trip last year mm -hmm. kind of all committing last minute i mean that that really brought us closer. Um, but uh, other other thing that you mentioned in the podcast um, was that you proposed the idea of catching hell. And, and Aaron's right. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I mean, Phil, Phil got it, and I didn't. And, and they tried to explain it, and I didn't get it. And uh, just now, I... Uh, I off after the last podcast ended we started talking and i kind of said hey guys you know i you know I, I i appreciate our friendship you guys know me better than i realized um and and started you know talking about some things i didn't think we were going to be talking about on the air here so um it's all of, real and one of the other things i'm like you know one of the reasons that you guys that i didn't get the idea is that i i don't really catch hell at least not for doing things i catch i catch hell i mean every <laughs> who doesn't catch hell but i mean for like hey i'm going fishing or hey i'm going hunting or or whatever i mean me and jessica have been married almost 15 years yep and she's never really given me hell about anything she apologizes if she calls me or texts me when she knows i'm hunting or fishing i mean she's awesome what's is that, that like yeah it's is that just her sorry i keep kicking the table is that just her or is that because like we're in a different phase of life than you because it's been as long as we've been married okay it, because like your daughter is older than our sons so our commonality between the three of us is our sons but so my youngest your is youngest is, is your guys' oldest, oldest. Yeah. so you're a few years ahead of us as far as like you can you guys can go out on a date and not have to worry about getting a babysitter where we're still in that area and like for years it was like this time of year it was like i'm leaving at the very last second i know exactly what phil's thinking like i'm leaving at the very last second and i will tell you as soon as we leave the cabin at 9 a.m we'll be home by one 
And luckily, we don't have any deer in the truck, so we don't have anything to do when we get home. Right. And I'll take the kids. Where, like, I think... And maybe, even though Jace and Jack, our two youngest, Phil, are a year apart, my wife is just maybe more used to it. Because, like, when I come home on Wednesday, I think I was, like, last year I came home and I was just like, hello, I'm home, and anybody miss me? Like, it was just like I stepped, there was not a big deal, which yeah. is what I always wanted to do. I said that, but, like, I do miss them, but, like, I want to be able to go and come back and not have the world stop. But I also want, at some point, to take the boys with me. I yeah. told her when we were young, I'm like, look, let me get good at this. When we were first married, I was like, let me get good at this deer hunting thing now. And when the boys are old enough, I'll take them with me. And you have a whole week, a whole week to do your thing. And I think she realized pretty quick that I don't know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> this is a big lie. Yeah. <laughs> it, and I, it's not that I can't go do things. And it's and, and honestly, I probably make a bigger deal about it than she ever does. Um, and it's, you know, like with golf, I've taken more golf trips, week long golf trips, yeah, no a, doubt across the country. Um, you know, Orlando, San Diego, all, all these places. Um, and she's always just kind of held it down. And I travel for work. You know, there was a time last year, I you know, seven, eight different out of state trips. Um, in the middle of baseball season, football season, middle of the week, you know, and she holds it down for sure. So it's not like it's, no, you can't go. And I even said to her last night when we talked about getting together tonight, I'm like, hey, I'm going to head over to Aaron's and, uh, you know, we're going to record another episode. She's like, I don't care. Um, I, th I think where I catch hell from with all of it is me trying to act like, I'm not home trying to carry on conversation like I'm like like I'm not gone I should say yeah where she's just like dude shut the fuck up hurry home and don't hurry home I don't care just you know I, I don't want to pillow talk right now you know <laughs> you're gone I, she's got the dog and the kids and and she's working you know I give her a ton of credit during this whole pandemic she hasn't taken any time we took time off to go on a vacation family vacation for a week um, other than that, she's working every day. Uh, she's got a high stress level job. She works in the healthcare industry, so she's dealing with this shit every day. We've had four or five different, uh, you know, run-ins with. You if know, you guys can hear that, yeah. it is pouring outside. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. Luckily, it's not leaking. No water. But she, Anyways, you know, four or five different run-ins with you know close exposures. Uh, there's a chance she's going to be working with. The COVID testing centers now that they're deeming um, non-essential surgeries to to pause with what's going on with this latest spike. So she's got a ton of shit going on, and um, and here I am working from home. So I I, I don't want to make it out to be worse than what it is. Sure, but sure. uh, you know, I I do catch some shit, but I think it keeps me on my toes. So. Yeah, I I do catch my fair share, but for the most part, it's she understands this time of year. It's, this is what I like to do. Yeah, so it is my thing. That makes sense. Over so, fifteen. Well, let's see. It's twenty twenty, so we've been dating since two thousand one. So this is her nineteenth hunting season, and I have all of about as many deer as I can count on one hand. Yeah. So she's like. Good luck. <laughs> I know you're not going to come home with anything. <laughs> um, one of the topics, one part of the discussion we started to have off air, and we said that let's turn this on, was the dynamic of this group when it comes to catching hell and what it looks like to us going forward, even from the start. So from the start, it was an idea for the three of us, and I, and I think going forward correct me if i'm wrong here this is the th this is the three of us this is this is yeah i i guess we've never really sat down and asked robert what his thoughts were on like joining up i know you just started your own business for your heating and air conditioning which sensible solutions sensible solutions hvac services yep. LLC. what's the phone number robert 
440-985-8387. Lorraine County and surrounding counties, if you have any heating or air conditioning problems, call Robert. He's your man. This bonus episode is brought to you by... Yes. So, we've never... I mean, that's not a slight to you or anything. It's just... We just had... The conversation hasn't included you, and I don't know why we didn't think about that. Anyways, it's where do we take it, what do we do, and how do we all contribute into it to make it whatever it is that it's going to become. Because regardless, I mean, we can not do this podcast and not record this stuff, and we're still going to go fishing and hunting together. Right. So Robert's yeah. turned us on to crappie fishing. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Because after eating that on the fire last week, as much of a pain in the ass as that was, <laughs> and my hand was on fire. Did your arm hair grow back yet? I don't know. I forgot I even did it. It looks good. Yeah. Can't even tell. Can't even tell. Yeah. No, I told you uh, frying fish on a fire is going to be challenging. For sure. In the dark. Yeah. There was you know, six of us staying around. Everybody had a job. I just happened to be the one holding the light up. Yeah. It was fantastic, though. It would have been really good if we had a backstrap on the fire next to it. But... Is that a knock at Robert for not taking that shot? No. I I don't blame anybody for taking a shot or not taking a shot on anything. There's so many circumstances that go into what happens when a deer steps in front of you. Yeah. And, Robert, don't feel bad about anything. I mean, if you look at the artist for the Catch and Hell podcast, it just says Aaron. No, it no, changed. I, no, I got it I fixed. No, I, I don't even know what time, what, what, at what point you hit record on that. And I wasn't trying to make anybody feel bad with my comment. I just, it's, it's just me. I, you know, I wanted to tell you guys, you know, how I felt with the podcast and how, you know, how proud I am of, you know, of you guys and, and your idea. Um, but just, you know, I, I explained how how I felt when I realized it had moved along, and and, and a part of it could have been me not showing enough interest in it you know what i mean and and you know I, i'm not you know i'm, I'm it, good it could have been a little of that and it could have been a little of us also knowing that you're in the middle of like going through trying to start your own thing and not having you juggle as many things as you need to juggle at one time you're always welcome to sit at this table and if we got to buy a fourth mic and a fifth mic we will for you to have your main mic and then we'll have guests and th- that seat is always for you the the m- oh that's fine and i and you know i wasn't i wasn't and, trying to pry and either. the other thing is that mic that you're talking on was like a hundred bucks and you've spent more than that in gas on us and yeah, no doubt whatever you bait and <laughs> catching nothing all that other shit i'm really bummed though we didn't hammer any walleye this year you know what i got called out i caught a couple I got called out the other day by a friend of ours for being a pussy for not buying the $30 fall brawl entry fee. Who? I can't say his name on the air because he's somebody important in the community who is in the schools. He called you a pussy. I want to know who it is. Is it? Write it down. Is it uh, a charity thing? I mean, I, I know a lot of people that are in on it, and I don't know exactly the details how it works, but... Uh, seen on face <laughs> <laughs> seen on facebook actually a, a not a close friend of mine but somebody that i know in in a, in a you know from Elyria is the leader oh really big, really biggest fish How well big? if he wins well we got a seat at the table if she, she wins good for her 11 and a half pounds holy shit wow. she's had the lead for like four or five days now when's it over i don't know it's soon it's the end of the, i think it's the end of the month yeah, I wow. seen on Facebook, and I went online and Googled it, and I'm like, I didn't know if it was the biggest fish that got you the boat. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah. No, the no, biggest no, too. From what I found, the biggest fish was like, just like a couple hundred bucks or something. No, no, it's the bi- biggest fish. There's biggest, two boats. There's two boats. You get your pick of the of the boat you want. The second place gets the other boat, and the third place is seventy grand. Yeah, like fifth place is like twenty grand. Yeah, but you can't go on a boat. So this is why he called me a pussy because he's like. Did it, Aaron get into the fall brawl? And I was like, no. Because you can't go on a boat with... I can't be the eye guy out. Everybody on the boat has to be entered. Okay. 
So he invited me to go yesterday, and I was I wasn't. I don't, the shitty weather yesterday anyway, so it's not a big deal. But that's funny. Um, yeah, I did it. Okay, I was first told about the Lake Erie Fall Brawl last year in like January, and I was like, I can't believe that this is a thing, and people are as crazy about this as they are. And then this year, by the time it started, Robert had pulled the boat out of the water, and we're kind of like not we're not die hard walleye fishers so we're fishermen so we're not going out there when it's cold right four degree yeah or uh four foot waves like that's just not what we're doing uh so i wasn't like whatever but next year i mean for 30 bucks why not i'll take a shot right well yeah we'll catch biggest one and pull in uh who 31 and a quarter inches i bet you know her if we, uh, there, that solves our problem right there, Phil, of like getting the catch and hell boat. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's... Well, hunt, hunt when it's cold, fish when it's warm. Yeah. yeah. You ever grab fish out of a cold minnow bucket? No, it I sucks. didn't. I we don't... did it. We did it in October. And it wasn't cold. <laughs> no, well, it was, it was colder than August. I've been watching the uh, Meat Eater YouTube channel a lot recently. And they've been doing like this ice fisherman fur hat challenge or like uh it's a fur hat series and they did this one where these guys went out and they were in like montana or something did you see that one the second one the second one with cal and he, the ice goals on the mustache had, I, I Lindsay it watched it and Lindsay was Gross. like oh so that guy kind of bothers me to begin with really i love cal i know you do and i've i've said this before and you had that reaction i'm like what the f-? i don't I like I like Yanni. I like you know I'm a big Steve fan. Um, that thing, that fish is a monster. Jesus. What day was that? That's crazy. The twentieth. Eleven wow. and a half pounds is in it. I mean, it's massive. They fish off like I think a, like a seventeen or eighteen foot tracker they got from Cabela's. Jeez. But now that that episode I struggled to to keep up with. I just. I don't. I don't know. I just don't care for the guy. I, something about it. That's about all right. Him. And then the the icicles hanging off his mustache. Yeah. It's like okay, this is gross. I'm turning it off. I like the concept of it, but I don't like the idea of like, well, let's just go out in the middle of the lake and what if, the, like, my worst fear is what happened to our friend Tim and yeah, I get stranded, get stranded and have to be life helicoptered off to Kelly's Island. Like that's crazy. Yeah, hopefully we get him on here one day to tell us that story. But semi pro semi pro bass fisherman. Yeah. Tim, we want you on in the spring. Yes, we do. Tell us where to catch the smallies. Tell us or show us. Yeah. I'd rather be shown how to do something than told. <laughs> show us. Yeah, teach a man to fish, right? Show him how to fish. Yeah. Right, fish for him, he eats for a day. Teach him how to fish, he eats for life. Well that's the thing with uh with crappie fishing. Um you guys people have seen how we do it with the videos and my dad and my uncles and everybody that's how they crappie fished in arkansas uh when they were kids dirt poor i mean they they needed the fish to survive yeah but um the the way that i've taught you guys to crappie fish there's a hundred other ways but the way that we do it that's fun nobody else does it that way you watch a video on facebook and you're like well they're jigging it with the spinning rod and And, yeah like what (laughs) They're just pulling them out of the middle of the lake. I'm like, well, there's no trees around here. Where are they? How do they know where they're schooling up? What are they book doing? Read will tell you to re- use four pound test or six pound test line and and all this other stuff, and and you can catch them that way too. But I don't know how to. Right. <laughs> so you catch them the way you catch them, and well, if you're on them, I mean, like you did this summer, you pulled what seventy. Uh, we yes, me, my dad, guys? and two two ten year old boys. Uh, it's a 69 crappie out in five hours. That's insanity. See, yeah. that's the kind of fishing trip that if we get on camera, I'll be happy with it. None of these eights. Well, where here's Robert the problem we six. have is we can't just go whenever we want. I mean, there's been times when we went and, you know, I had the day, but you had right. you had a football game or a baseball game or coaching right. or you had a, you know, a birthday event planned for a family member. I mean, and, and the thing is, sometimes you can go – in the spring and you can go saturday and sunday for two weekends in a row and get four good days in and you're like well i'm fishing too much so we'll take a weekend off and the next thing you know it rains for the next two months 
and you don't get another good day in. I mean, right. you, you know, when it comes to crappie fishing the way that we do it, you got to get it in when you can because you just never know when it's done. That's not the only thing I view in life that way. <laughs> get it in when you can? Yes. <laughs> it's for a different bonus episode. <laughs> different bonus episode. Well, yeah, and you like you said, you're like, oh, we fished last weekend, so we got to go to Cedar Point this weekend. I'm like, you guys, I don't know how you do everything that you do with the boat and the camper and the kids and the this and that, whatever. And you'd be like, I, that's the... I love it. Ben was talking to me the other day. He's like, we get a camper? And I'm like, yeah, when you stop playing baseball, right. which you're not going to do. When so, you're 28. Uh, uh, I'm grateful that you guys have that and are like, come down whenever. We can hang out. Uh, but, like, I just feel like it would be such an obligation to be like, we have to go. And we've had those summers where you're just like, it rains every Saturday. Yep. Or it rains. It's like deer season, right? It rains every first day. No matter what it says down at the cabin, if it's zero percent chance of rain, there's a chance it's gonna rain. Don't trust the weather. And I would just I'm just that person that would be like, Shit, it's raining again <laughs> and we have to use this. So we're gonna sit here and smile at each other because we paid all this money to sit here when <clears throat> it's like anything else, you, you make time for it. Yeah. So my my extended family has always had uh they have campers up at Marblehead. So that's kind of how I grew up knowing a camper. Um, and then Courtney's parents uh, had a place at Catawba. So I always enjoyed the Friday, get in the vehicle, 45 minute drive, go over the Sandusky Bay Bridge. And it feels like you're, you're going into a different world. You leave all your problems, all your bills, everything stays at home and you have somewhere to go. Um, so I always told Courtney, if we were to ever get a camper, I want it to be like a far enough drive to where it feels like I'm, I'm getting away and going somewhere. But seeing the schedules that our kids have and, and all that, it's really nice. It, it would be really nice to have a camper if we ever have one within a 20 minute drive so that you, you could, you know, spur the moment, make a trip because like you said, <clears throat> you'd feel obligated to go you're spending that money you know you got your payment your insurance all, all this stuff and then when you go you it, it just costs more money you got you either going out to eat or you got to take food there you got you basically manage two kitchens now you're gonna lose twenty dollars in catfish lures in the river fishing yeah. with kids yeah that was fun <laughs> I, I caught a catfish though. we you, didn't eat it though no hey what are you gonna do with one fish? it's fun though i mean i i really do appreciate that for with with you guys and the fact that like and we're to the point where we're just like you know that whatever that was that friday this year the girls are like we're going kayaking and whatever i'm like okay go go you go do your thing yeah because i know i'm gonna ask you the following day that we're going on the boat right and we're not taking the kids so they make it seem like it's some, some huge inconvenience to take the kids well Sometimes it is, and I do have a very short fuse and get pissed quickly, especially when there's fishing poles involved. And for the most part, I don't mind like hanging out with all the kids and letting them go drink their white claws down the Vermilion River for four hours. Their drunk asses carrying those kayaks back was hilarious. Yeah, do your thing so I can do mine. Right. It's not. It's not an inconvenience. Well, that's where the thing is. Our our older boys are getting old enough that they want to fish. And there's really not a good boat anywhere for crappie fishing the way that we do it to take three adults and three boys. Right. So we've talked about that several times last summer. We got two boats we could take. Uh, we could put people in one boat and two people can take kayaks if that's what we want to do. I mean, at some point, it's going to be competitive. If anybody knows of anybody who has a nice... 12 to 16 foot john boat that they're looking to get rid of please email us at hell is hell i catch it that gmail.com but um there's you know maybe we'll need three john boats and it'll be competitive father, yeah. father, father son. son i'm cool with that i will say the six of us uh fishing for channel cats in the river was was frustrating yeah oh for sure the boys just wanted to run and play what do they play that ghost in the graveyard but yeah there's there's something they play like hide and seek well just like anything too you're fishing a 40 foot 
set of 40 foot expand or like campground set that you're trying to fit eight lines out of yeah off of a, it's 40 foot wide yeah off and, of a top of a hill where you got 12 feet of brush underneath you before and you get rocks. To the river. dad i'm hooked right that's and then they want to throw it out, reel it, throw it out, reel it, throw it out, reel it, and it's not a... I feel bad when we do stuff like that, because Robert will spend the entire time working. Right. And one thing I, but I did get really good at this summer from all the fishing we did was tying knots. <laughs> I got really good at tying knots. Uh, I have no idea. I'm, I'm slipping on the name of the one I tied to tie the normal line, and I'm working on getting better at tying the double uni knot to tie the leader line to the main line you don't need a leader line when you're crappy fishing you don't need a leader line when you're crappy fishing time for another beer robert yeah I'll be right back. yeah i don't i don't know i think I think every year, and, and it's, it's like that with hunting, it's like that with this podcaster brand, it's like that with anything we do, um, every time we do it, or every year, it'll get better, it'll get less stressful, it'll be less of a pain in the ass, it'll be um, you know, more enjoyable from a, from a being outdoors side of thing, and less stressful from, from a dad side of thing. Um, yeah, and I, I think one of the things that like frustrates me with the kids, especially, is they're just they're kids. But I look back at like my experience, right? So like, when did I start fishing? I wasn't Jackson's age. I wasn't seven when I was fishing. I was more like Ben's age. I was ten, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I was not five or six. So trying to teach a kid to fish. And not throw the line back and get it caught into a tree. Right. Is something that I never had. You made me, Robert, you made me laugh this summer when you were like, I didn't stop getting yelled at by my dad fishing until I was an adult. Like, it's true. Yeah. That's, it's as frustrating as it is for the father and the son getting yelled at and sometimes smacked. Looking back on it, it was, it was awesome. Looking back, it's memories, you know. Right. So maybe. I don't know. Maybe I'll work this winter if we get like officially really shut down. That teaching wow. my kids is high line knots. So you're not, it's not. You're just not going to teach. You're not going to teach kids to. to I got to teach them to tie to shoes they first. Want, you know, when you're fishing, they want to keep casting. They don't care about catching fish. They want to just keep casting. Oh, you know what I mean? that one's weird. <laughs> so which one's Sorry, that? I'm drinking a new a new beer. Which one's uh, that? This is the. Is that the one? Ranger. New Belgium, Higher Plain, Hazy Imperial IPA. That's the one with a it's dope got, leaf on it. It's got that's a hop leaf, not a pot Whatever. leaf. I can't see it from here. You're it's, all the way. It's hop. It's also not artichoke. For our one she listener, said it was different, good or bad. I'm not a huge fan of the <laughs> flavor palette that they've got here. If they tell me what kind of IPA or what kind of hops are you using. when I was a kid, I didn't go fishing because my dad I'm wanted, still gonna drink it. wanted to take me fishing. I went fishing because it was my dad's weekend for with me you. to be this with This is him. what we're doing. And, and, he, was, and he was going fishing. <laughs> I mean, Good to see you, Robert. Get in the truck. We're leaving. <laughs> yeah. Uh, same thing with hunting. Me and, me and my sister could tell you the same stories. That, you know, it was like... Uh, we're going hunting in the morning. Okay. All right. You know, this is what we're doing. Yeah. I never, so young and growing up, I remember, I do remember being my youngest age a couple times. Um, do you want the heater back on? No, I'm good. Okay. I'm good. What, do I sound like I'm shivering? No. I just, I felt a chill all of a sudden. Sorry. I'm good. We did. The reason the last podcast sounds so good is go get a heater up here. <laughs> Thank you to Mr. Buddy and the mini propane heaters. Yeah, that thing's sweet, the Mr. Heater. Um, no, I, I remember a couple times being young and waking up to go fishing with my dad. And we would go fishing with some neighbor friends of his. It was never consistent. It was never a lot. And it, and it was always just like big pond or small lake fishing. Um 
And then I would do a little bit more fishing just off the docks over at, at Marblehead. But I never really got into it, um, which is probably why I don't, I, I, I don't love it. I enjoy it. I, I enjoy being out on the water for sure. I've, you know, Court's dad has a boat. Well, had a boat, um, you know, so we spend a lot of time out there. Um, you know, so, so I do enjoy the water, and the water is her the water is her place to go. She's got um, a, a lighthouse tattooed yep. on her. So that's, that's her that's her happy place, right? But um, mine too, Courtney. Yeah, I I really want my kids to be able to say, you know, we we did a lot of stuff, and I learned a lot of stuff, like decent information, how to provide, right? If 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 shit were to ever hit the fan around here, how are you gonna provide? Like the, everybody's talking about worst case scenarios and you know, I'm sorry, I can't drink this. <laughs> government shutdowns and all this crazy shit, but like, what what, what are you gonna do? If something like that happens. You got to be able to, got to be able to provide. So, no, it's you. You say that's that's what you did with your dad because it's just what you did. But there's, you know, I, I hope you're able to look back at it and understand like how kind like of. This. Which one is that? I brought those this year. Did I'm, you like them? I don't remember. He's got one, two, three, five empties over here. No, that's why I said, like, looking back when you're yelling at Ben. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, you're, frust- and you're frustrated. Sorry, son. Like, that's, that's part of fishing when you're a young kid and you ain't doing what you're supposed to do. The part that I love, though, with Ben, it's funny how they're so different, right? Like, so... I know that Ben can sit there in a deer stand with me for three hours and not see anything and be like, I'll go do that again. Because he knows that you don't see something every time. And, like, when we went walleye fishing this summer, like, I remember looking at him on the boat, and he hadn't gotten a hit on anything in the water. And I was like, you good? And he's like, yeah, I'm good. I'm like, would you do this again? He's like, yep. Like, he didn't have any problem being like, I know – that we didn't catch anything, but I'm going to come back and do this. And then, like, right after that, he was like, hey, um, can I take my fishing pole down to Dooley's camper so that Ethan and I can go catfishing by ourselves? And I was like, absolutely. I'm like, you can do that all day. I'm not going to be mad. Like, I want you to be like uh, Opie and Andy, like, let's go fishing, you know. What's that show that my grandma used to watch? You know what I'm talking about. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, but Andy sounds Griffith? good. Yes, Andy Griffith. Go. Like, <laughs> okay. go find the fishing hole and go fish. Well, that's the thing. It's like when the boys are all there, they just wanted to like talk. They wanted to go play. Right. Fishing wasn't a priority. Like Ethan, he'll fish. Like right. if, you know, he loves to fish, and but he wants to be independent. He doesn't like we. He doesn't want me to help him. Right. That's you know they're to that age, but when they all get down there and it's like. He wants to go yeah. fishing, but we could go run around. Jackson is a different story. Oh, Jackson, he's a, he's a sportsman. He is. He's going to be the one who, when he, when it clicks with him, that this is what deer hunting is. This is what that. Is, it's going to be like we are going. And I could see Ben like as he grows, falling off of it. But it's just funny how like, you know, I could see Ben being the deer hunter, and Jackson's like, I got to go duck hunting because there's action. Like we're. We're sitting talking, and then all of a sudden it's like, pa 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 like. Yeah. I just got a call or a text from Courtney. You left me. You were sleeping. No, you Go pick me. her up, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> Phil. But, but, you know, like, when we were, when we had the boys out on the boat and came in to fish the river when Ethan was, mm-hmm. his stomach was acting up, that was, I think that was the perfect example of my Jackson's determination determination for sure absolutely and he's like that with everything well, so not any better he was the last that one sucked too they both suck and he's and weird he slide it over i'll drink it <laughs> no i'll drink it it's just i want i gotta go ahead phil no it's his determination he was the last he was the only one to not catch anything and it was hot it was like 90 some degrees we're sitting in the sun and we kept fighting the boat because yes. we had a big boat and a small river that was that we weren't trying to anchor 
and also stay out of everybody's way right. because it was Fourth of July weekend. Yeah, that's right. It was Fourth of July, and he would he would not stop until he caught a fish. And you know, he's like that with everything. Today, he spent the entire day um, cutting up Amazon boxes and building a space shuttle. And spent all day on it. And when when he's set on something, he just goes and does it. He to me, he would be the the hunter, the fisher. Um, it's I, I don't know how I, I think Jace would have um, some enjoyment in it just because his brother's doing it. I don't know how he would be sitting in a deer blind for three four hours. Where where Jacks, I could see him being the active watcher. Right. And, and being determined not to leave until he's got something. But That's where our young ones come in. They're, like, yeah. identical on that. But everybody's background is different. Like, like your, my love for fishing, it's weird. So I grew up fishing. We always caught fish. I mean, if you went fishing again and again and again and you didn't catch fish, you, it'd be boring. Right. I mean, we always caught fish. I mean. Those are my experiences from when I was younger. I mean, with, with my dad and my uncles, we always caught crappie. And with um, a guy uh, my mom dated growing up, we always caught walleye. I mean, it's, it was, we rarely fished. We, we caught. I mean, it, it was fishing. Um, rabbit hunting was the same way. My, I enjoy rabbit hunting, but my, as all the old timers kind of moved away and retired, uh, I'm not a big fan of eating small game. So the small game hunting is something that you know i just kind of let go but it you know it's fun it's a lot of fun well guess what what we got somebody that's wanting to get us out and do some rabbit hunting um i grew up rabbit hunting yeah i've never rabbit hunted i've never rabbit hunted either but i hit those rabbit clays yesterday though yeah what is that what is a rabbit clay so like you just what, roll it and <laughs> dude we got to do this it's so much fun there's it okay so yesterday for my work which I love my work. My boss was like, we're going sporting clay shooting, the whole company. Well, all the salary guys, there were 12 of us total. Two groups of six. We went out to uh, Briar Oak in Bellevue, Ohio. And look them up if you want. I uh, don't know how they do their pricing and whatever. Anyways, we shot 100 clays. You shoot 20 stations of five. And actually, we shot a couple extra bonus stations. And... It's not all just birds flying. So they'll do like uh, some stations that are out over a field. It'll be bird, and then they'll be like, all right, doubles. So they'll shoot two clays at once, and they'll be real close to each other. And they'll, they'll shoot like a report pair. So it'll be like one and then one. So it'll be like, pow, like shoot, and then find the next one, shoot. And then there's some stations when they're in the woods, they're doing a what they call a rabbit. And they instead of flicking the... Uh, clay like this it flicks on the ground and it shoots it and as it it just jumps on the ground so it's shooting a rabbit and then they'll shoot another one that they call a fox which shoots at a different angle so it's a little slower it was i've done it twice now and it is like the most fun thing ever you get to go shoot a gun for four hours with your buddies and it's just four hours of shit talking and we keep score and the highest score in the group. We had 12 guys. The highest score was like 67 shots out of 100, which is really good, I think. I shot 51 out of 100, and the lowest was 6. We had somebody hit 6 out of 100, and it was a it was our secretary. That's a waste of ammo. It was our, it, it was our secretary. She's never shot a shotgun before. We well, gave her a her. double a double. Uh, an over under 20 gauge um and she by the end like the first time she shot i think she said she cried somewhere through the first three rounds because she accidentally loaded it and pulled the trigger and it shot <laughs> she was like oh my god i feel terrible like obviously there's nobody in front of her but you know whatever uh and then like so we were given we were like hoping that she did really well because there was another guy in our office who was like we give him a lot of shit. He takes a lot of shit from us, but we're like, oh, man, Kim's going to beat you. You suck. Like, whatever. He got 10. So uh, he was shooting my gun. He kept blaming my gun. But it was so much fun. So, like, to go rabbit hunting is actually something that I would really like to do because I've never done that. 
Um, I barely squirrel hunted, so. I, I remember squirrel hunting vaguely, but rabbit hunting was something we did all the time. And I don't know if I have enough connections of people still that I could get get us some permission to hunt on some land. But well, it never, sounds like the guy we want to go with. He's already got that, all that. But so. I've never yeah. really hunted without dogs either. I know people do, but yeah. we always had beagles. So we're looking to do a guest spot with him. I'm trying to get the guy I got out at work who's got the duck goose connection. I'm going to hit him up over the month and see if we get any late season duck hunts. I'm just it's getting into things we've never done. I mean, if I was going to hunt at this stage of my life, I mean, I do hunt a little bit. Uh, duck hunting is where I could see myself getting super excited. You yeah. know what I mean? I mean? We could set the giant boat up for some duck hunting. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what the laws are. We've got duck blinds at work. I'm saying, I don't, you know, I, duck, do hunting, some research. duck hunting is something I could get into. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. There's no holds bar as to where we want to take whatever it is that we're doing here. So I've got family property in Kentucky that maybe someday we'll get into with elk and bear. Uh, maybe. Don't tease me, man. It's still out of state tag and getting drawn. I mean, Kentucky elk population is doing great. The things they're doing down there is amazing, and we just are blessed to be in a county that have elk. But I don't think there's any on our property um, or near our property. But it's still a place to stage and go from. Right. But you still have to be drawn. That's like what whatever the odds are to get down there and do that. Um. I'm really not opposed to hunting anything. I don't really have any interest in going over to Africa. I don't know if my uncles. Down <laughs> I don't have the money for that. Either. I don't know if my uncles down in Southern Ohio still do any any rabbit hunting. I know we used they used to. Um, they they would love to host a bunch of bunch of Yankees. Hell yeah, <laughs> bunch of city boys. Uh, I, know hunting, I know we're welcome to yep. deer hunt down there, but you know we kind of have our own own little thing going on right now. Um, and uh, you know maybe my, I mean my dad's getting older, but. Maybe one of these days, uh, when the fishing's good in Arkansas, we can take Road a long trip. weekend, and uh, I guarantee you that'll make for some good material. Concrete warriors, yep. I'm ready. The, the fishing in Arkansas, I'm sure it's. I'm sure there's some other great places too, but the fishing you. in Arkansas uh, is some of the coolest fishing I've ever done. Yeah. Your mic or your headset? Technical issues. Just a second. We can cut this out, right? Yeah. I, I just sound okay. That's a are you going up a little bit. Yeah, I'm better. going up on your mic. Okay, right? that's better. Or on your volume. I'm not going up on your mic. Oh, Robert is sitting a little far away from his mic. No, it, it's me that I was having issues with. Okay. okay, we're back to it. I'm not opposed to doing anything. I whatever anything yeah. in the continental <laughs> United States that I can afford, I'm down to do. Well, we for a good year and a good time. Um, this year, my dad said the fishing sucked. Sucked all year. Really? Yep. Sucked all year. I really want to head up when we go to Hilton Head in the spring, find an outfitter we can go fishing on. That'd be cool. I mean, Just to do something. That'd be cool. Be like, oh, maybe by then we'll have a t-shirt we can give them. Yeah. Well, shit, we should have t-shirts by Christmas. Easy enough. Maybe. No, I'm down. I'm down for whatever. I, I. It's a time thing. It's a thing. It's, absolutely. Sounds good right for now sure. during COVID. But when we're playing football and baseball at the same time, and maybe travel, it, it travel is a time thing. And but like uh, we talked about, you know, in the last podcast when we kind of got into coaching and stuff, which I did have some suggestions that we do our own episode on that. Uh, there were a couple of people that were like, oh, "I don't really get that," but they don't have kids or are into that. Uh, yeah. Um. But. Like you said, there's going to be a point where we're not coaching these kids. Right. They're off on somebody else's dime, and uh, we're going to drop them off, and they're almost to that point where they don't want anything to do with us anyway. Right. So. We get to be the parents that just... I'm going to come to your games and yeah. do this. and Complain about your coach. Right. So, I looking forward to whatever this brings. Um, hoping for a good winner. I ice think, fishing uh, would be cool. Ice fishing would be interesting. I don't know how much I'd like that. 
I would do it. I for sure. I know a lot of people that that do all this stuff. I've ice fished once. Yeah. And Why not twice? You I froze your ass off. I, I don't. It's I don't a really, whole other set of I just, gear I don't want to buy. I just. <laughs> I just didn't love it. I mean, yeah. I, I, you know, life's busy. I, I remember how many years ago it was, but, you know, the kids are growing and just different. Every year is a different stage and your opportunities are different, yeah. you know. I think another part that's, like, really grown my interest, especially in the past year, is the fact that my family likes it. So, like, we can go crappie fishing and my kids are like, I'm going to eat that. Yeah. Uh, wh- where When's the fish fry? Like, same with the deer. And my wife is into it. So it's not like... Oh, you killed a deer, you have to make the whole thing in summer sausage or beef sticks. Which there's nothing wrong with that, but when you take a then you take a deer which we could process ourselves. While it's a pain in the ass, whatever, it's time. Um you take a deer that doesn't cost anything to make roasts out of, and now you're like, Well, I got a five hundred dollar dough because I gotta make summer sausage out of this whole thing. And then we tell everybody it's beef. I don't have that. My kids actually like eating the roast. They'll eat the backstraps. They'll eat everything. And then I can jerky the rest if I want to, which I'm going to do at the end. of. I should pull that out because I'm going to do that Friday or Saturday for the trip. Crappie the same way. I mean, a fish fry is a fish fry. I'm They'll, surprised how good crappie is. Like, I'd never had it until... I'd never had it until Robert yeah. said, let's go crappie. It's my favorite sure. fish. I'm like, well, what's a crappie? Well, because we live near the Great Lakes where walleye fishing in the past three years has been off off the charts like record breaking um it for the you know i wouldn't say it drives the economy but that's that's the, obviously there's that's, a that's third the, place is seventy five thousand. That's, <laughs> that's the sport fish in this area and when you're talking pan fish um up until the walleye got hot you know everybody perched dinner perched dinner perched dinner right it's a you know those are both i would say commercial fish that we get out of the lake erie um, where you know crappie and bluegill, when you get south, are the fish of choice for anybody and everybody. And being that's where my family's from, that's that's what I know. So right. you know when when my when my family relocated up here um, for jobs back in the seventies, um, my dad and his uncles just looked for a place to fish the way they always fished. So you know. Uh, a lot of people don't know what a crappie is, or they call it crappy, or they know how to spell it. Because I called it crappy <laughs> my forever. Gamer tag, my gamer tag on, yeah, uh, Xbox. on Xbox, crappy Fisher. So everybody's like crappy, crappy, crappy. But um, I, I've yet to meet someone that doesn't like it. It's it's. I'm surprised how good it was. If I can get my wife to eat it, and my kids, she didn't have any at the cabin. No, she did. She didn't like it. No, she loves it. What I'm saying is, like, if I can get if I can get her to eat it, oh, I got you. We're good. If you can get her, you can get anybody. If I can get Jackson to eat it, I'm like, she didn't eat any. If I can get Jack to eat it, we're real good. Well, Jessica said she never liked fish till she ate that. Both my kids would smash it. I used to fish when I was little. We'd go walleye fishing and stuff. I'm like I said before, like that's how we we would do. My memories are going out. My grandpa bought a boat. It was like a 16. He had a couple boats. He bought a 16-foot boat from a neighbor, and it was, like, just a little bigger than your John boat, and we would fish off that. And then the next summer, or later that summer, he bought another boat off another neighbor that was, like, a 23-footer. All we did was walleye fish, but we drift fished. We didn't troll. We didn't... Trolling was him driving and us dragging lures behind. It wasn't with dipsies and all this shit that everybody does now that shit's still another language to there me, was no science in it was just, and trolling just and all that shit yeah. all that dip, but we dip always shits or whatever he said uh, we always put fish in the boat but i didn't eat it i was like I'll, dip shits. <laughs> i don't know what he said i'll i'll i will uh fish but i wouldn't eat it until we started crappie fishing i have one other f- i wouldn't even call it a fishing trip i got another method of fishing that I haven't done since I was a kid, and uh, it's something the boys could do. We would all be kind of independent, but I think it's something that we would all enjoy, and the fish is good. Rock bass fishing. I caught rock bass up on Higgins Lake this summer. Rock bass fishing. Uh, and I'm I sure didn't know what they were. You can do it a lot of places, um, but in the Vermilion River, um, there was times when we just couldn't go crappie fishing. Um, 
you wear an old you can phil you can buy a set of uh waders <laughs> if you'd like but in our case of course. in our case we bought we wore an old pair of tennis shoes and an old pair of blue jeans and you wade up the river you wade upstream so that all your mud and everything goes behind you <clears throat> but as you're walking through a shallow portion of the river um and it's clear you can actually see each of the rocks as you're walking up to them and you just trip your lure with a worm on it on the other side of each rock and it's a rock bass they live under the ledges of the rocks they are fun to catch and they're delicious to eat you i'm down do you have to have like sign me up the right river configuration for that though you need a cheap fishing pole because you're because okay so if you're fishing in three or four foot water you're gonna have uh usually somebody will wear like a belt with uh there's they make a kit i don't know what it's called but like a thing that worms live in Mm -hmm. on your side where you can reach in and grab the worm and you put it on your fishing pole with similar to a crappie pole but we're not going to extend out 10 feet so you got a fishing pole you put a worm on it and you're walking and you literally you're not even casting you're 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 walking up and you're dropping two three feet under the water under the ledges of the rocks as you go and it's not something i did a lot but i know there's a lot of rock bass in the vermilion river what i meant though was you have to do it because the vermilion changes so frequently based on there'll be a section between weather. oh yeah the ri- it'll have like to be of good river conditions correct it'll have to be clear so you'll probably have to have a week to 10 days without rain so but that it's, still have enough water in the river to the area the area we would walk will have water in it all okay. the time because i know like i don't fly fish my boss fly fishes the guys at work fly fish and those guys are like okay we had rain on sunday but we got to wait four days for it to clear up and then it's now kind there's, of, enough, it's river, kind of now like there's enough water and clarity in the river that we can go steelhead fishing yeah but even if it were to go two or three weeks without rain okay there'll be areas that we can fish i'm yeah. telling you we we may it may be a bust but it's something that I enjoyed as a kid, just being able to get in the water and walk. I mean, the, the boys would like it. Right. The boys would really like it. Yeah, the only rock bass I ever caught was the summer at Higgins Lake. And I didn't know what they were. I remember. I mean, they were they're red eye fish. And I'm like, I think these are rock bass. I don't. I could. Well, that's the thing is when I. Okay, so. You text me and you're like, oh yeah, those are rock bass. I red eye rock bass. I'm well, like, my oh. dad calls them gargle eyes. He said they partied all night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I remembered because I remember. Um, I kind of got out of fishing as a teenager. My dad moved back to Arkansas, and I had no interest in fishing, so I did teenager stuff. Um, but then there came a point where I wanted to go fishing, so I bought this little John boat and kind of got back into it on my own. And then he started coming back up here, and, and it's you know it, it's been a cool thing. But um, I remember sending him a picture of a fish because we caught like I think we caught like 25 or 27 of these fish. And I thought they were crappie. I mean, it's that's where I, I guess I was inexperienced. But I caught these fish, and I thought they were crappie. And I cleaned them the same way I would clean a crappie, which was incorrect. Um, and I sent my dad a picture, and he's like, that ain't a crappie. And I'm like, <laughs> that's when he said gargle eye, I've never forgot it, because they, they do have red eyes. Yeah. They but were fun to catch. They're good to eat, man. They're good to eat. I wish I would have known that, because I'd have really hammered them. I had really focused that day on Higgins when we were catching them because Higgins Lake is a place that I would love to take you guys. It was just a like summer vacation we took this summer that was spur of the moment. It was like, all right, we're gonna we're locked down from coronavirus. Let's go somewhere. Right. And I was my wife was like, let's go to what's the one Torch Lake? Like she wants to go Torch Lake or silver lake or what all these places in michigan and i was like "Uh, those places aren't available on an eight day notice so i found this little cabin up on higgins lake and higgins lake is like like the entire perimeter of the lake is like four feet deep and then it drops off to 120 feet deep well you can like rent a pontoon boat and anchor the pontoon boat and the front end is in four feet and the ass end is in 40 feet which is why you need a pontoon boat yes Lindsay. Which is why Lindsay's like, we're buying a pontoon. And I'm like, nobody on Lake Erie owns a pontoon. And she's like, I will. And it's got to have a second level and a stripper pole and all these other things. Like, Whoa. Nope. I'm in. I'm in. Yeah. yeah. I'm in too, but apparently 
they don't do that. I don't think it would clear the bridge on Route 6 in Vermilion. Oh, you just get a shorter pole. <laughs> well, they, there's, uh, there's marinas north of Route 6. Yeah, but that costs more money. Oh, don't be a cheap ass. You got a stripper pole in your <laughs> no. pontoon. Anyways, we can make a pontoon boat. That sounds like an episode. Kids were jumping off the back of the boat or das the front of the boat. stripper boat. boat. Das stripper boat. Come on, Renella, step it up. And uh, I was fishing because I'm fat and I don't want to jump in the water with my shirt off. I was fishing off the back, and it took a bit, but I was catching fish. And if I had known that the fish I was catching were good eating fish, I would have thrown them all in the cooler. Yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't scale them like you do a crappie or a perch. You'd fillet them, but other than that, it's it's the same. Yeah, that'd have been good to know good next fit. time. Good fish. It's a it's a bass. I'm really it's looking very, forward to going back fish. to Higgins, but baseball and spring break next year are going to allow me not to go on any vacations other than that yep so this is what it is we'll get there at some point it was fun though it's like a hidden gem you tell people you're like i went to higgins lake and they're like where the hell is that at you're like torch lake and you're like no it's not kind of don't want to tell people about it baseball's gonna have us all over the place this year (sighs) yes do you guys kind of play, your boy's going to play kind of simultaneous? So the way the way it's broken down is there's 22 kids total. So there's going to be two rosters, and all the kids are going to be on both rosters since we're playing in different leagues. And that's just going to be for, <coughs> um, you know, injury, vacations, kids are sick, whatever. You need a pitcher, or if, like, Jackson's caught the last seven, seven games in a row and it's a hot day, Hey, give us a catcher type shit. Um, okay. Same, it'll be the same thing for tournaments. But the intention isn't to have kids playing in, you know, a ton of games taking playing time away from the other kids. Um, it's just because we can, we will, and it's it's allowed us that flexibility. Um, but we'll have different – that we'll be playing in different leagues. I'm going to assume that the days are the same, but there's already a couple of tournaments that we're – uh, both teams are doing. One of them is in Ocean City, the Youth Baseball World Series. Um, that is going. That's going to be an interesting trip. There's only there's only two teams from Ohio in our division, and and it's both that's our awesome. teams. So, um, it, it it'll be an experience for the kids for sure. Um, relatively inexpensive for the time of year. Um, it was like six hundred fifty bucks for the hotel for. Four days. I was surprised how inexpensive it all was. In in prime time in Ocean City. So last year, for example, we went for a week, and it was like eleven hundred bucks, which was about half off of the year before. We just got a really good deal because of COVID. Um, so usually you're gonna pay around two thousand dollars for anything close to the beach during prime season. So for six hundred fifty bucks. You know, four days, and we're right by the baseball stadiums, which is on the bay side. So that's that, that'll be pretty cool. And o- Ocean City is just you know my favorite city, favorite city to go to. <laughs> Never it's, been. It's so I fun. I have to do it. So I asked them too what they what they fish for there because we were going on this ice cream cruise on the bay, so they. Um, they take you out at sunset for a couple hours, and they serve you ice cream and, and shit. It was it was actually really enjoyable, and um, it's cool. There was a there was a thirteen year old kid there. His name is Wyatt. And I, I won't forget I won't forget the kid because his story is is awesome. So his grandpa owned a multi million dollar crabbing company, um, and his grandpa had just passed and left him the company. So his dad right now is is kind of running things until he finishes high school, and you know he he'd be eighteen years old and have a have a crab company. And so the there were storms coming in later that night, and the bay was kind of choppy, and you know he's like this this is pretty tough tough waters, and I'm like well you know we live on Lake Erie, this is kind of normal Lake Erie water, so we got to talking about fishing and that kind of stuff, and I asked you know what do you normally fish? around here and you know they'll spend a week catch catching one tuna and it pays it pays their salary for for a week oh yeah you know our, our grouper grouper was really big for them that's like their prize fish so it's 
It's interesting. A tuna fish would be, tuna fishing would be pretty sweet. That would be that'd be interesting. But uh, I oh. just want to go on the like ocean. It's fun. It's fun. We saw wild horses and shit. I know one guy that tuna fished because he took me offshore fishing, and he went two weeks earlier on a tuna fish charter out of uh, I think he said Louisiana. And this guy has his own boat and catches ocean fish all day. He's um, he caught a f- tuna and his son caught a tuna. One was like twenty five hundred bucks, and the other was eighteen hundred, and that was like a flat fee for the charter, and then you pay for your fuel. We're not there yet, people. <laughs> so. That's great because, you know, they they get anywhere from like ten to twenty dollars a pound, right? You know, and you dress those things; they're anywhere from two hundred to four hundred pounds. That's cash money. So you get to keep your own fish, but you're paying for the fuel and the guy who's taking you to find it. That's isn't that the life? Somebody to pay you to drive them to go fish. Your half a million dollar outboard thirty six footer that's got pontoon, triple Yamaha three fifties on it. Those are some serious boats. I'm really bummed the boat show's canceled. The IX Center sold. Uh, I know, but I was hoping it would be downtown at the con- anything. Well, they said the car show was canceled too, but they were going to do that at the Huntington Center. The boat show's not what it used to be when I was a kid. I mean, I can't afford boat, a new boat. No, that's the thing. No, no average person can can for- can afford a new boat. Right. None. They did say that there were some people renting out IX Center. I don't know what it was for. But uh, the indoor amusement park. I don't. Know. I don't know. We that go to the we go man. to the car show every three years because that's when the lease is up, and that's what. <laughs> tell me what you want. That's about all we would go for. I've gone for the bike. I'm show this close though to talking to her about getting a boat. Mine she might be for pool. sale. Oh shit! Might need it to buy a work van. <laughs> Well, if we buy it, you're you still using it. So it's <laughs> yeah, he'll just pay you, and you can still keep it. But it'll be his boat. So that every every podcast we, we finally have put a out. name on it. You know why we haven't caught anything? Because there's no name on the boat. There's no name on that Never boat. Been a name on it. Catching hell, motherfucker. Yeah. Jenny one. <laughs> Jenny one. Or Dorothy three. <laughs> Dorothy three. Toto two. Yeah, Toto two. That's Gotta have a name for that old boat. That's all right. Somebody listening will come up with a good name. Leave it in the comments, and yep. we'll name it. Someday. This is My- a this is a pretty cool random. How long? <laughs> it's an hour. Is it really? <laughs> That's awesome. The That's bonus awesome. episode's longer than the one we were supposed to talk to. That's okay. But they still had to text us, and the beer still. I'm getting. We texts. still have like nine beers over there. <laughs> Phil's wife's about to Uber. <laughs> car to drive. Uh, you can come back and get the car tomorrow. Yeah, we're not doing anything tomorrow. Come. I don't care if there's a car in my driveway or not. I don't That's care. Right. I don't care if my car's in your driveway either. No, we know you can walk here. Well, <laughs> well, we know Lindsay can walk home know, from Robert's house. Yeah, Lindsay can make that walk. We walked, uh, me, Aubrey, and Jessica walked home from here before. Yeah. You guys walked over here in the beginning of COVID. I remember I was sitting in the driveway. That night, Lindsay walked home. I walked with her and walked back. <laughs> I remember at the beginning of COVID, so I had my appendix out literally like March 23rd, right when all this shit happened. And I was like two weeks after, and we're like doing these nightly, we were talking about nightly family walks and all this other stuff. And. <laughs> We got like halfway around the block, and I was like, um, I'm going home. Lindsay's like, Why? I'm like, Well, I have to poop. <laughs> <laughs> you carry on on your walk. I'm not going any farther. And I came home, went to the bathroom, and like literally stepped out of the door. And it was like, All right, they'll be home in a minute. And all of a sudden, the dualies come around the side of the garage. And I'm like, Where the <laughs> hell did you come from? And they're like, We went on a walk too. <laughs> and I was like, Well, you want a beer? And they're like, Well, yep, yeah. Of course. <laughs> That's almost so, as good as a shitting story as the real one you got to tell one day on the air. The side of the road? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm going to wait to tell that till we have our special guest who was with me that day. Uh, Is that the brewmaster? Uh, that's one of our brewmasters, yes. We have, we have multiple brewmasters that we, we know. We're talking about a lot of shitty beer on here. I mean, great beer. I just no, I, I, I would see. think that both of those guys would say that this beer is... As on par with the bush lights that I'm drinking. They're not, uh, they're good craft beers, but both, uh, like Southern Tier has been sold 
uh, it bought out. And Voodoo Ranger isn't a brewery. It's New Belgium's brewery. And New Belgium is huge. So they're yeah. on a small and crack. I'm excited for those guys to come out and have them bring some. Collision Bend or Steel City. Yeah. We'll have them bring some yummies and yeah. see what it's all about. We got... I think we have a pretty decent amount of guests that we want to have on this. So we're going to have to definitely figure out this space. Um, this table works. For three of us. I think it could work for four or five. I think the mics need to be moved a little. Like centered and then split to the sides. That we really that can't we'll, see each other. Yeah, but we don't... We, we know what each other looks like. We'll figure it out. Yeah. So... We did an hour of bonus shit, so... I have to cut out the last five minutes of bullshit. It's all part of it, though. They're still listening to this. They're, <laughs> they're in it for the long haul. Super fans. <laughs>